That is wonderful, you guys. That is great. And here on Zoom, I see some smiling faces. That is great. You know, we are all connected. We are all of us connected. When you call out this way, you are calling out through connections that already exist. Now let's take a moment and look into ourselves. Look into ourselves and do a quick check. See what maybe clutter, debris, poor self-esteem, doubts, whatever is ready to be released. Anything that is below that frequency that we just put out there, invite it to either raise its frequency to what is now the only acceptable state in your body, or invite it to go. It does not need to be here. It can go elsewhere and do something else. Gratitude, gratitude is a powerful manifesting agent. I have seen people just through feeling gratitude for life, no matter how or where or what is happening in their life at the moment. I have seen people create great manifestations. So anything within you, below the frequency of self-appreciation, self-gratitude. Give it an option. You can either raise yourself up to gratitude or absorb the gratitude energy like a sponge, or you were invited to leave. You would be amazed how much of this stuff we spend ourselves our lives hiding from in ourselves, actually would be very happy to leave. Or it may give you a little, a few instructions. Yes, I would like to leave or evolve. First, I need you to acknowledge something or express something or appreciate yourself so that I can raise my energy up, you know, says whatever is the debris in there. Some of the things that are ready to release, they're the easy ones. You know, whenever you have a moment to relax and you're like, oh, finally a moment for me. And then the unnecessary thoughts pop up. They like rise up and you're like, no, 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 get away. And you push them down, you push them down, you should put a boulder on them. Like, now I can relax. Actually, those unnecessary thoughts, you know, the ones I get are usually you're super weird, or no one wants to hear what you have to say. You guys already know that about me. Benita, shut up, shut up. <laughs> or um, I'll tell you, for so many years, I was terrified. Oh my God, if I do not kill myself working 70 hours a week, I and my family will become homeless and have no nothing. I, I went to sleep every night with that thought in my head. And I would wake up in the morning with a headache and feeling like I was having a heart attack. That was like a good, I don't know, 15 years of my life, every day. Um, and it was unnecessary. I did not need to do that to myself. These thoughts that were rising up were rising up because they were ready for me to acknowledge them and release them. They don't want to be in your body any more than you want them there. If they are unwelcome in your psyche, then odds are they're like, hey, hey, I just want to tell you I'm a self-esteem issue that you really don't need to have anymore, but I'm kind of stuck here because you won't let me go. They want to get out. They want to go away. Remember, energy is never new. Energy just changes shape and form. If you're carrying negative or toxic energy in your body, and trust me, I can relate, 
this energy does not need to be negative or toxic. It has the ability to transmute or transform or go elsewhere. Trust me, as soon as it leaves your body, it's like, oh my God, Benita kept me in her body for like 30 years as like an ignored, you know, negative entity that she like malnourished and abused. I'm so glad to get away from her so I can like, Oh, be happy energy again. Trust me. Trust me on this. Because you know what happens when you die? The first thing that happens is you're forgiven everything. It doesn't matter what you did in life, you are forgiven. If you harmed anyone in life, your soul, like when you die, and believe me, I know this, like, with the work I do, I've seen this a lot. When you die, your soul goes up to a place where like your, um, usually your guardian angel and some others are there to help you with like a transition. But the souls of everyone that you feel guilt, remorse, anger, anything from, they come to you and they forgive you for all the harm you did them. And you forgive everyone for all the harm that they did to you. This happens like one of the first things after you die. So if it's going to happen anyway, why the heck do we carry it around with us like our whole lives? It's like carrying a backpack filled with boulders your whole life for no purpose whatsoever. Every one of these issues is a karmic lesson waiting to be completed or an unnecessary issue that you can release. Like it's in there, but you have the ability to like deal with it and get it out. Anything that is self-judgmental, I mean, come on, you're an eternal being of love who has chosen to spend a few short years in an incarnation as who you are. Like your soul is magnificent. So all of these self-abuses that we do, these are just little karmic lessons. And I mean, little <laughs> to our soul, they're little to us. Obviously they're pretty big that we can resolve and release because when you die, the slate's wiped clean. If you're in the middle of a big karmic lesson, then that will have to be completed in another life. So if you do not care for this lesson, it really behooves you to resolve it in this life so you don't have to go back to it in a later life. Anyone who's ever had to repeat a grade in school, you know, or retake an exam or anything like that, it's like that. So again, there's no value judgment. It's, well, you do it now or you do it later. No one cares. No one cares. If you want to ignore it and deal with it in the next life, then don't carry it with you. Say, you know what? I'm going to deal with this in the next life, but for now, I'm okay. You know, like when you bring work home with you for the weekend, you're like, you know what? I'm going to do the work on Sunday. Saturday, I'm going to kick back and have fun. Exactly the same. One of the reasons why we forgive each other is because it's the same reason why um, we kind of wipe out our memory when we come to life. So imagine you know me in a life and in this life we met in battle and I killed you and then a thousand years later we run into each other and you're like I remember you you murdered me a thousand years ago Ugh, I'm so mad at you I'm gonna kill you and I'm like but in this life we're meant to have a very uh compatible relationship for our karmic lessons like it's all about karmic lessons. 
So we can't carry an old lesson to a new experience. So there's no value judgment. It's uh, like when I say we're like actors doing improv theater, in many ways, we really, really are. But, you know, in improv, they're always in the moment. They don't care. Oh, yeah, three months ago, we did an improv where we were giraffes. So I want to bring that back. Like, no, because right now we're riding the New York subway. That doesn't even make sense. So we forgive each other. You know, and also like, what if in one life you soul contract me to do something horrible to you, which sets a chain of events that allows you to have an extraordinary soul lesson? And this was all planned out. So what are you going to be mad at me? You're the one who asked me to do that, even though you didn't know it at the time and it was really hard for you. Now, I'm not saying everything bad that happens is like a soul contract because a lot of bad stuff happens that we do not plan for. But everything that happens brings a karmic lesson. And every karmic lesson, if you don't get through it, it's just going to get heavier and worse, just like any deadline that you put off till the last minute or beyond. You know, it's always best to like just go through and say what do I have to do to finish this karmic lesson so I can get onto something a little more fun so right now we did this beautiful tapping and I invite you to look in yourself and say let's look at one thing one element that is one of those unnecessary thoughts, one of those debris that sort of gets in your face and interrupts you from having that relationship with your soul tribe, with your friends, your peers that you feel so comfortable in. Just bring up one element. For me, I'll tell you, it will be um, self-esteem. You know, like many people, I have my share of self-esteem issues. And I think that no one wants to be friends with me. It's a very natural thought for me. It's more natural than breathing. No one wants to be my friend. No one wants to date me. No one really wants to get to know me as a person. That's just something that's always been with me. So I know that's not true in here, but... Right now, I'm going to invite this to come up for me. I'm being very vulnerable and honest with you guys right now so that you can be vulnerable and honest with yourself. Because we all have these issues. So I'm looking at self-esteem. And you are welcome to look at one issue for yourself that prevents bringing in this soul friendship that you deserve to have or friendships. Let's send it all out there and see what comes in. So I look at this self-esteem and I say, what I want you to do is look at your issue and treat it not as a part of yourself, but like a separate being, a separate entity for this is energy that's really not compatible with your personal divine flow of energy. You know, it's something that's stuck in there that's blocking things from coming to their best fruition. So invite this energy to step out of your body. For me, it's like right there in my heart to step out of your body and like into your hand. Treat it like a separate living being that has just sort of nestled in your body and gotten stuck, trapped there. And talk to it the way you would talk to anyone that you care about who's dealing with this issue. So I'm looking at the poor self-esteem, this little piece of energy that all it is like a sad sack. Oh, no one wants to be my friend. No one wants to like me. You know, no one ever wants to get to know me. 
And I'm looking at this poor little piece of energy, this little fluff ball that's so sad. And we're like, oh, you know, that's not a fair way to treat yourself. What would you say to anyone who came to you and said that? Of course, you have wonderful qualities to you. And you don't need to be this way. You can be happy. You can be wonderful. And you know, as I said, we are all connected. Even this little ball of energy has a soul family somewhere, a soul connection. I'm going to go, you know what, little energy? You deserve to be treated better. So I would like you, instead of returning to me, I want you to look up and see your soul family is there. Your little energy family is up there and they miss you. You have been stuck in me for too long and they're looking for you. They miss you. They're calling to you. So I want you to realize you deserve to be loved and you deserve to go back home to your soul family. So I want you to rise up, go back home to your family where they can love you and heal you and let you be again home where you belong. And the little energy might be afraid. Oh, they wouldn't want me the way I am. And we're like, of course they would. Your family. They just care about your well-being. The little energy would say, but I'm so used to being here. And I'm like, yeah, but you know, this isn't good for you. You need to be where you will be healthy and nurtured. So rise up, little energy. Rise up and return home. And for myself, this vacant area in me, I invite my soul to flow energy from my soul to me. You are always connected to your soul. You're an aspect of your soul. I invite my soul to send special love to me because I deserved it. That's my reward. I just did a good thing. I helped release a sad little energy back to its family to be healed and loved. That's like rescuing a puppy dog, you know, and sending it back home. Or, you know, this is like, what a good thing we have just done. So I deserve to receive a little extra love from my soul. You know, you guys open the top of your head. Allow the top of your head to feel very light. And invite your soul to send a special bit of love into you. You can receive as much as you want. Fill up this empty area with soul love for you. If you have, if you want to ask for like, you know, like, and while you're at it, give me a shot of courage and, you know, a little bit of a, swagger i could use a little more swagger right now love courage and swagger you know bring it on in and let it just like fill you up fill you up you may have like a little unusual feeling in this area where that poor little repressed being that has been thinking of you as a cruel jailer for far too long and now you have good friendship. It may feel a little sore or raw because, you know, but invite all the energy to shift and fill and heal. Give yourself the healing you deserve. Think what a good thing you just did. And it helps you open up for this manifestation. Bring in your soul family. Bring in those you love. Bring in gratitude. Relationships that you feel such gratitude that they're part of your life. 
relationships that they feel such gratitude that you are part of their lives. That everyone is better for this connection. Invite that. Invite that energy to filter and flow. You have any part of you that is resisting? You know, go back in and say, so what's with this block here? Who do we need to talk to now and continue the process? And I'm telling you, you'll be amazed how much clutter and debris and unnecessary will rise up. You're like, finally, I have been trying to get out of you for 27 years, but you've been like cramming me down and ignoring me. Hello. And at some point you'll be like, oh my God, there's so much I can't even like, all of you just get out, get out, go home, go home, scatter. <laughs> And then you're like, okay, soul, there's a lot of empty spots in here. Just fill me up, fill me up, fill me, give me the good stuff. Because I am telling you, we do get to choose what is inside of us. But no one teaches us how, like until now. Okay, now, as you are filling up with good stuff, and invite your soul to just keep that flowing in, keep it flowing in, think about if you are allowing yourself to acknowledge how amazing you are, then the basic frequencies of your being are things like compassion, gratitude, adorable, fun. Like that's your baseline. Anytime you find anything below the baseline of magnificent, look at it and say, hmm, do you belong here or do you need to go back home? And, it, and whatever it might be, be like, no, 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 I want to stay. Help me, help me. And they're like, okay, so fill up with gratitude so you can rise up, you know? Some of you can be a work in progress. That's okay. But think about it. You are your own project. You are creating the magnificent energies, your magnificent being. You are your own project leader. There's no question of, do you deserve it? Or ego, arrogance, humility. That doesn't even factor in here at all. All there is, is we're cleaning everything up and raising the vibration. Then we'll see what we can accomplish from that state. 